Hey EDF fans, welcome back. Today let's talk about a couple of tips and tricks and some good practices when debugging data flows in Azure Data Factory and in Synapse Analytics. Okay, so first let me establish with you what I'm talking about when I mean debugging your data flows. Essentially what you're doing is you're in design mode. You're designing a data flow. This could be a new data flow or you're going back in and maybe testing or updating a data flow in the design surface inside of Data Factory Synapse Analytics. Now, when you're inside the, the designer, uh, you can work with your uh, transformation tiles and you can also work with the expressions inside of the data transformations without needing to have a debug session. What a debug session does, and it's this button up here that turns on the data flow debug, that uh, launches a debug session as we call it, is that spins up then the integration runtime that is associated with the Spark cluster that will be used for processing and transforming your data. Now, if you activate that debug session, that will give you access to the Spark compute while you are designing. And what's really nice about that is you can have an interactive uh, design experience that really helps you to be able to troubleshoot, unit test, and to be able to work in a manner that allows you to see the data as you're transforming. It also does other um, actions like schema, lookups, connection tests, and those sort of things once the cluster is available. So it's definitely an advantage to have the debug session on. Now, when you go to click the button, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click it now to turn on the debug session. You'll see that you get this uh, dialog box on the right hand side. And what we allow you to do is to pick the integration runtime that you use for the debug session. So mine is defaulted to the auto resolve integration runtime, which is the default integration runtime that comes with every factory that you make or every workspace and synapse that you, that you spin up. If you drop down the box, you'll see the other integration runtimes that are part of your factory that you can use in there. And they will use the uh, data flow properties that you have set in those integration runtimes. So the auto resolve, which is what I, uh, generally recommend to use this is um, you will be um, uh, given a small size Spark compute to work with because you don't need a large cluster in most cases for debugging. And then the region that it spins up is going to be auto resolve, which means it's going to spin up the compute in the region where your factory is or your workspace. Then you have a time to live. The default is one hour, but if you're going to be working for a longer period of time, you may wish to always have that available and not need to start it back up. And so you can set a longer TTL on it. Again, I don't this is one of the settings I don't really recommend using unless you have a uh, dedicated integration runtime you like to use. So for example, I have this Dataflow IR uh, with reuse integration runtime. And on this one, I've set it to a custom larger size uh, debug session, which I may need for some uh, you know work that I do with some customers or if I'm uh, putting together some large uh, uh, demos. And so I have a total core count of 32 cores for that cluster. But notice that when you pick an integration runtime that's not the auto resolve, you're given this message saying that if you do choose a uh, custom integration runtime, we cannot use the pool of uh, debug clusters that we have uh, to, to provide for you. So you have to uh, go through a cold startup, which is about three minutes for the cluster to start up. So summing this up, my first suggestion and tip for you when working in a debug designing a data flow is to have the debug session on and to use the auto resolve integration runtime. Uh, so uh, the, all right, so uh, let's go ahead and start up the debug cluster with the auto resolve integration runtime, the best practice. And then this way uh, we have the right size cluster for debugging and for testing. And uh, this will start up in a few seconds as opposed to using the custom integration runtime, which would take a few minutes because it would be a cold startup. There we go, so the debug session is available. Okay, so let's move on to tip number two, and that is that uh, now that you have a debug session with a smaller size cluster, uh, keep in mind that the idea behind a debugging within the designer, and by the way, when I mean debugging inside the designer, what I really mean is you're generally going to go over to the data preview tab on your um, transformations. Let's go over to the source in this case, click data preview, then you're going to click refresh because you want to see the data interact with it um, as you are designing. What this really is, is essentially a way of unit testing each of your uh, transformations, each step of your logic within the graph. You can test that out by looking at the preview data and by ensuring that you're getting the results that you're looking for. Okay, now that you have access to your data, I want to point out a few things about the preview pane for the data at the bottom. You can use this uh, arrow over here on the right hand side at the top of the configuration panel for the, for the data transformations. And you can make that a full screen and then interact with the data here as well. So um, within the preview, we will show 
the first 100 rows returned. If you want to see more than 100 rows, there is an export function that will give you 1,000 rows. Export to CSV is right here. If you click on the down arrow and then export top 1,000, you'll get even more rows that you can then interact with and you can explore uh, through Excel or you know any kind of, uh, essentially any uh, text file reader. It's a CSV that you will get when you export. Now you can also interact and you can um, explore the data here through the data preview pane by um, sorting your data in line. Uh, you can also move the columns around to uh, set the columns in a certain order to explore the data. Uh, there's also the ability to ask Data Factory for statistics on each of the columns. So I can take the grade column over here, highlight it, and then click on statistics, and you will uh, get a result of essentially a profile of the data in the column where I can see the distribution of values in there. Now what I really wanted to get at when we're exploring this data uh, in terms of a of a good practice here is that because this is meant to be only returning a small set of data for your testing, it's preferable for you to use smaller data sets within your design and debug process. Now, that's not always something that you can easily change because on the source settings, you're going to point to a data set or you're going to use an inline data set type. A data set is a shared data set that is part of your factory that you can use in other parts of your data factory. Same thing with a Synapse workspace. Inline defines the data sets directly inside the data flow and cannot be shared outside the data flow. Either way, if that data is looking at uh, or pointing to a large set of data, um, you know, millions of rows, it can make the um, uh, the debug experience a little bit less, uh, a little bit more difficult to work with. So I have some recommendations in those cases. The first is click on the debug settings button up here and you'll see that you can set and you can change the row limits. The default row limit that is looked at um, by Data Factory when you are looking at the preview data and debugging is 1000 rows. Um, that's usually a pretty good number, but you can make that smaller. Or if you do have a larger integration runtime, because remember you only have a, a, a single worker node of four cores for the integration runtime, that's the odd resolve. That is the size of the Spark cluster you're given for this debugging. So if you if you picked a larger one, you can always you know increase this to larger. But there is a timeout, um, a fairly small timeout, it's a few minutes uh, for the results to return to the UI for debugging. So I do recommend keeping it smaller. So use this to keep it smaller. Now that brings me to the third tip in terms of how to use data that is of a smaller size while not needing to change the definition of your sources. Okay, and I'm gonna, exp I'm gonna explore this a little bit with an example, something that I, I see commonly for uh, data factory users when using data flows. On the screen, you see that my data flow has three sources and they're all loan data sources. This one is coming from a SQL database uh, loans table. The second source is coming from a loans CSV file. And the third is coming from a loans parquet file. So they all, they all have loan uh, they have uh, data that are loans inside of it, but they're all slightly different. And I wanna, what I want to do in this third stream of data here is I want to join them all. Uh, I want to join two of them together, actually. So I have an inner join on here. Now, what happens is because we uh, this data set has hundreds of thousands of rows, in fact, in fact I think it might be near a million rows. Um, and remember, the debug settings, because we are working with a sample of data for debugging and for previewing data, is set to 1,000. When you're testing your joins, what you may run into is that you don't see matches because it, data factory is not able to sample the entire a data set. So if you're matching on keys, which I'm doing here, I'm matching on a key of ID, the result may not be returned. And what you end up with, I'll show you here in a second, when you uh, are refreshing the preview data for your join, what you may end up seeing is a result like this, where data factory comes back with no matches, even though I know there are matches in these data sets, right? So it's a little frustrating. And you get the response of saying there's a high number of null values or missing values that may be caused by having too many rows sampled. Essentially what, what um, data factory is getting in here is trying to tell you that um, it could not find the matches based on the data that was sampled. And that's why you're seeing no rows. So you can't fix that in this case by setting a lower sampling or a higher sampling because maybe you don't have a large enough integration runtime for that to work. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to create a sample set of data and I'll show you how you can replace that in line without needing to change your, your data source. So my fourth tip is how to create samples of your data. I have a very simple data flow over here that I call sampling. And I take that loans, one of the loans data sources, in this case the CSV, 
and I'm going to create a couple of filtered versions of that data set to only give me 20 rows. So there's about a million rows in the source today, um, and I have the full projection of that data here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a parquet and a CSV version of the data so that I can use it as a sampled data set. So in my filter, what I say is give me just these IDs. I have a list of 20 IDs and I put them into my expression and I can move this over a little bit so you can see. There we go. So I have a series of IDs and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those and I'm going to create a file with just those IDs in it. So now when I test, I will know that my joins will work because I'll have the correct rows in it. So I then create in this case the parquet data set. I'm using the inline type that I mentioned earlier because this is not a, this sample data set isn't what I'm really going to be using um, anywhere. Uh, this is just for the, the purpose of sampling. So I just made an inline data set so it has no name to it. It's not stored anywhere in the factory other than the data flow. So what I do is from a pipeline I can run this and I can create the um, data set. So you have to run a data flow from a pipeline in order to serialize the data. This will write that data to a file. I'll now have two files that I can use for my sampling. What When those files are created, I can go back to my loans data flow and I can take the debug settings and I can take those sources and I can say, you know what, for my testing, just use the sample version. So the first data set, the first loans data set was a database table. So you can say, you can select sample table. And if I real quick switch over to my SQL Server Management Studio, you'll see that I've created a version, exact same version of that, um, the sample set of rows called loans small. And in there, I have just those IDs as well. So now I know that those will match when I, when I test my join. All right. So I will pick that table. This is in debug settings. So which means that this does not change the does not change the source at all. This is just for the debugging while I'm in this um, interactive session. And then over here on the loans three, where I'm uh, also doing the, the join, this is the left hand side of the join, I'm going to use that sample file that I created. So I can browse over to the folder where I put that sample data, which is going to be under sample data, under loans. I remember I made a CSV and a parquet, and this is the parquet source. So I just choose the parquet file. Save my debug settings. Now let's refresh. Now when I refresh, Data Factory is going to read those two sampled data sets instead of the source data set. But notice we didn't change the sources. The sources are still pointing to the full data sets, which is really nice because when my testing is complete and I go to operationalize and deploy this inside of a pipeline, these sample data sets will not be used. It's only for the purpose of me to test my, and there we go. So now my, my join is working and I've tested that completely. So there's one other thing I want to go back and just show you before we close up, and that is that when I created the sampling data set, um, I use the filtering mechanism. There is another way that is built into data factory. So let's call this um, my final tip, which is that when you have a, um, a data flow on the sources, there is actually a sampling option. So you can say uh, sample just the first 20 rows when you run it from a pipeline. Remember I was saying that the debug settings sampling is only valid this limit is only valid for the debug session that is true but there is an option to also make that part of your actual uh, pipeline and by using the sampling in each source um, this is good for testing your data flow from the pipeline so when you go to run it from a pipeline and do your testing from a pipeline the sampling will be honored um, i just you know remember to go back in then and change that back to disabled so that when you do run this in a production environment you're not sampling your data and that's it, and I hope you found this useful, and thanks for joining.